you know, what mediumship is, the psychic mm -hmm. process, all that stuff. So I want to kind of demystify it all. So what is mediumship? Uh, well, first, let's start with, um, you know, when you talk about sort of being grounded or the uh, grounded approach to mediumship, you know, in my school, School of Mediumship and Spiritual Studies, um, you know, I, I teach folks remotely and, of course, for years in person, but during COVID, no longer <laughs> in person. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my approach to, to this work is really to anatomize it for students who are learning it. Um, and, you know, there's always going to be a mystical element. We're talking about something that's infinite, right? We're talking about the universe. We're talking about soul. You can't capture that in words. We can use language to tr try to describe reference points so we have some kind of understanding of it. But um, I, I think that it's important we have to, one, honor that mystical aspect of it. But I also feel that, you know, in, in being a teacher and, and helping students develop, that anatomizing something, approaching it from a scaffolded space, you know, one bit at a time, I think it's really, really important. And I think there are fundamental aspects about mediumship that are very much not mystical. They're very linearly understood, um, it, given enough experience and given enough sort of guidance or, or mentorship. So I think that um, historically, you know, there's a lot of the, you know, the mysticism is what sticks out for people. Um, you know, think about like even the old sort of stereotypes of the old lady with the, you know, the crone with the tarp over her head, you know, looking yeah. over a crystal ball, those types of things. I think that that's, that's not what it has to look like. I think sometimes it does. And I think that that's okay uh, because each of us connect with spirit and to the universe in a different way. Um, you know, and, and, and that's not to say in my life, I haven't had those very like mystical inspired experiences <laughs> walking around in a cape because I've definitely done that. Um, but is that sort of the way I normally approach this work? It isn't. Um, survival of consciousness is, is very real in the work that I do. And that's really, that's what mediumship is. So me mediumship is um, demonstrating continuity of the soul and doing that through evidence, doing that through information that's verifiable and unique to a particular soul that you're communicating with. Um, you know, none of the work that I do in the, in mediumship is, is scary or frightening. You know, one of the things that a lot of people who, you know, come as clients say is that they're a little bit nervous. Um, and I always say, you know, you're going to stop being nervous as soon as I start talking to you. So don't worry about it. Um, and then one of the other things that people are nervous about or sometimes afraid of is, um, you know, that the person that they want to communicate with on the other side, it may not have believed in this type of thing. And so they might be angry that we're contacting them, but I'm actually not contacting them. They're contacting me, right? Like I don't, I don't shout out to the ethers. So-and-so come to me, right? They come along with the person that they, they are connected with. And so, you know, spirit is always a willing participant. Nothing is nothing forced is being happened. If someone didn't want to communicate, they wouldn't. And, you know, I have brought through so many, I mean, of course, thousands of souls, right. In my life, but, um, you know, some that stick out are like, I, I've brought through nuns, oh, yeah. um, which is fascinating. I brought through, like, of course, this happens regularly, very, very religious, very devout um, uh, people who would not subscribe to the idea of spirit communication, one, that it was possible or that you could do it. And here they are now communicating again um, through the evidence. So demonstrating the continuity or the survival of their consciousness after physical death by talking about, you know, a number of unique things that are only true to them. And so, you know, I was just doing an interview quite recently. We we're talking about the level of accuracy in this work. And, and you know, when we're probably going up into the, you know, the, the 90s, 95% accurate, sometimes is 100 accurate it's really hard to like statistically refute what's happening so it's you know that mediumship is that process so bridging that connection between consciousness without form which is a soul which is what has survived and us here in the physical world so as mediums we're able to learn a meaningful and verifiable information through communicating with those souls so that their person here can identify them wow that uh, makes a lot of sense, you know, and it's really interesting how that approach to it, because like there is that duality between, like you said, like there is the mystical, but there's that grounded approach and where, how we can take that and providing the information, which is really important too. And again, that accuracy, what you talk about is like, you just, you just cannot get that information without being into that, that area, that consciousness. So it's, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. I love that approach. So how did you get started in mediumship? Like, was it like, were you like one of those typical psychic children that, you know, saw ghosts and grandma walking around the house and things like that? Or yeah. was it later no. in life? <laughs> yeah, not at all. Right. Yeah. So, the, you know, I get this question a lot. 
um, probably every interview I've ever done. We I'm pretty sure. I, I, this is a standard question, right? I have it listed <laughs> down here. It is. It is. And you know, when I'm interviewing other people, I ask them the same thing because I think it's interesting because we do, we do really all come from different places. We have different experiences and that, you know, that might be part of what's behind my sort of a grounded approach, as you call it, to, to learning mediumship and doing mediumship, because I didn't have those experiences by and large. I wasn't a psychic kid. Sure, I was perceptive, but I wasn't psychic. Um, I didn't have premonitions. I wasn't aware of spirit people walking around or moving around me, um, like at all. So, um, you know, when I was young, you know, 11, 11 or so, um, I started, you know, learning about earth-based religion and paganism and I practiced meditation and I, and I, you know, I knew that trees could feel things and all that stuff, but that really started around 11. But prior to that, you know, of course, like I'm raised Roman Catholic <laughs> and yeah, I went to church every Sunday for, you know, my whole childhood. Um, but um, I definitely had an affinity toward um, like non-form things, you know, even like nature, um, you know, spirit, gods, um, guides, all kinds of things. Um, but mediumship specifically didn't begin for me um, until I chose to learn it, which is really like the basis of, you know, my, my book and my practice and my school is that anybody who wants to learn to make contact, verifiable and meaningful contact with the other side can, because that's my personal experience with it, um, is that I had no background in it. I had, don't come from a lineage of mediums or psychics. Um, and I, I learned to do it like, you know, learning to do engineering math, which I also have had to do in my ordinary educational background. Um, so, so that's my, that's, that's it. And I came to it out of loss. So I had lost my dad. Uh, my dad passed from cancer and it, it, and that happened almost simultaneously with giving birth to my first child. So I was dealing with, and I, you know, I talk about it in my book, I was dealing with new life and death at the same time, which is profoundly challenging, yeah. right? It, it, for a number of reasons. Um, but I, you know, after I lost my dad, I really kind of challenged the universe with big, big questions, right? Like I had lost my grandparents when I was a teenager and I was really close to them and, and their, their, their death mattered to me and it affected me, but it wasn't the same as when I lost my dad. Um, and so I, I started asking big questions. I wanted to know if my dad survived, right? I wanted to know, is he still alive somewhere? And if so, in what way? I wanted to know if he was alive still, where is he? And I want to know, can he make contact with me? And I wanted to know all of these things, but I wasn't, I wasn't willing to just vicariously learn answers, you know, read a book and figure it out. Cause I'd already done that many times years before <clears throat> in all of my study, I wanted to have direct experience. So I, I sought out those experiences that would answer some of those questions for me, not having any intention to do this work uh, publicly or professionally or anything like that. I had no, I had no idea what it, what it would look like. My initial um, prompting was to make contact with my own parent. I wanted to know if he was around, 